Okay. So the class is being recorded, and like I said, this is theme two, and theme two is all about technology. Spoke last time about technology, and we said that technology is big. You have different aspects of technology. You have different branches of technology, and the branch that we are focusing on um, in theme two is the uh, transport, moving from one point to another using a technological invention. It could be a car, it could be a train, it could, could be an airplane, right? Um, these are all called vehicles. And these are vehicles that we use in order to move from one point to another. Um, again, we'll, um, we'll address ourselves to the idea of who, who invented, and what is it that he invented, and when did he invent what he invented. So transport inventions, and then we will move to a brief history of space travel. We spoke about the idea of brief, and, and, I, and I said that a synonym for the word brief would be short or limited, right? So it's a limited or a short history of space travel. Um, okay, let's move all the way. We started that. We spoke about some of the inventions. And I remember we made this distinction between discoveries and inventions, right? Just remember when we said that discoveries, you discover something uh, that was hidden for some time, right? It was hidden, but you uncovered it. Uh, this is a discovery. But when you invent, you make something, you compose something. Uh, you make something from nothing, from scratch, like they say spoke about uh, conquering. Remember, we have uh, spoken about this uh, list of words. Or, um, yeah, conquer, drive, field, fly, invent, island, power, sea, transport, travel, and walking. And you said uh, the word conquer here is used metaphorically um, or um, in a literal way. You conquer you normally conquer a place, you conquer a country. For a country to conquer another country would be to, to attack the country and take it over. Um, it's some, some kind of in, invasion, if you like. But we're using the word conquer here in a metaphorical way, to conquer your hunger, to, you conquer your thirst, and you also conquer space. So it doesn't mean that you will go with armies and people uh, people and soldiers know it's only that you are doing something that nobody has done before. Remember these different uh, means of transport, these, form, these different forms of transport, bicycle, ships, rockets, right? We spoke about uh, their oldest and also their newest, right? Do you remember that? Okay, I'm just trying to, to check where we stop. I think we stopped here. We even went all the way back to the script and we have read um, some of them. Okay, so what do we have here? We have words like air, land, opinion, rocket, sky, steam, track, and wind. Um, do you have any issues with any of them? Do you have any problems with any of them? You know what opinion is? Give me a synonym. Give me a synonym for the word opinion. What's an opinion? Or how? How do people express their, their opinion? If you would like to share an opinion, what are you going to say? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, may I, doctor? Yeah, go ahead. Um, if if you if you want to 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 express your opinion, it's it's like giving your thoughts or maybe sharing your ideas. Maybe yeah. you can use phrases like, in my opinion. In yeah, my you can say, yeah, in my opinion, I think, I believe, right? My beliefs, in my perspective. Right. Yes. So opinions are views that you have thoughts that you have uh, something, right? So in my opinion, uh, in my view, 
to my mind, I think, I believe, I guess, right? Okay. Um, okay, so air and land, um, what is common among them? Air and land, these are different ways of travel. You travel using a plane, and obviously you travel in the air, and or you travel using cars, and this is, of course, on land, right? Uh, any other uh, way of transportation that we have? You fly or you move on land. How else do you travel? So it's either air, land, or air, land, or ship by the ah, yes. sea. Yeah, by the sea or by a river sometimes, right? Okay. Good. Okay, so uh, in order for your car to move, you need to have power, right? In the past, they used to have coal, they used to have steam. What do we have now with our cars? For our cars to move forward, for our cars to move from one point to another, what do we need? Do we use steam nowadays? Bukhar? No, we use what? Um, petrol, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, you use oil, which is petrol, more or less. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, this is about recognizing the organization of a lecture. A lecture is a class like the one we have. What we have now is called a lecture. Okay. Uh, and a variation on the word lecture would be a, the word tutorial. So you have the word class, which is the most common and then you have tutorial and you have a lecture, right? Do we have a difference between them? Yes, we do have. So class and tutorial are almost the same. A tutorial is when we have uh, interaction. You say something and I ask you for a reaction or for a repetition, for an answer. This is called a tutorial. And it's normally on a, a small scale where you normally have a class of 30 people, 40 people. Okay, how about the word lecture? The, the word lecture is used in universities where you, you, you normally have, um, you know, especially in specialized courses. When you go to your IT classes in your uh, subject area, when you go to um, English literature in, in your major, you will have a lecture where you have uh, perhaps hundreds of students and uh, um, you you have a lecture not a tutorial language classes are tutorials because we gave you some space so that you can speak so that you can answer questions and everything so whether it's a lecture or a class you need to be familiar with the organization uh, the order of the lecture so you know what to expect so we normally start of course with the uh, introduction the introduction to a lecture often gives you the order of subtopics. So use the introduction to pre-organize your notes. So as a student, we expect you to take down notes. OK, you have a pen or a pencil handy and you have a piece of paper, uh, right? And you take down notes. So if you know the organization or the order of the lecture, you know, for example, that Dr. Sam is going to start in the class um, by introducing the ideas and the topic and then he will develop them and then he will end. If you know this organization, it can help you a great deal, especially if you're uh, taking down notes. So how do we take down notes? How we um, um, recognize the organization? You normally, um, you know, um, teachers like me normally start and say, first, I'm going to talk about this. Um, first, I'm going to talk about that. After that, I'll tell you this or that. Finally, I'm going to say this. This is normally the introduction. You expect your tutor every time he, walk, he or she walks into class to give you the agenda. We call it the agenda of the class. So the agenda of the class is more or less like the introduction where the teacher tells you specifically what he or she will do in class. Okay, is that clear? 
Uh, and I think we have an example, and we'll go straight to it. Um, this is 2.1. Listen again to the first part of the lecture in lesson 2.1. Uh, what is the lecturer doing in this part? I uh, will go to 2.1 very quickly. 2.1, everyone. If you have the book, you may want to use 2.1. So 2.1, yes. So can we read it out loud? I mean, read it on your own, and then we can always do it. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so you guys are reading. Okay. <laughs> this is a typical introduction. This is a typical lecture introduction where the teacher walks into the class and he gives you the introduction. You know what he or she will do throughout uh, the class. Can somebody read out loud? I need somebody to read it out loud first. Hello? If somebody can come to the mic and read it out loud, uh, loud for us. This is the uh, agenda. Of, yeah, go ahead. Where uh, people, people? Uh, track 2.1 in front of you. Uh, can I do okay. it? Yes, go ahead. Uh, okay, go ahead. Go. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, go ahead. I I am going to talk to you today about innovations. Inventions. In, in inventions. Inventions. That is the new ways of doing some something. Other inventions are in the field in or the field, area. In the field. In the field or area of, transp of transport. First, I am going to talk about different uh, methods. No, we don't pronounce the ta. Uh, we don't pronounce the, the la. Uh, so I'm going to talk, talk, not talk, talk. Okay. Hmm. I am going to talk about different methods or, t or tapes types, of types, 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 types of transport. After that, I will tell you when each method was was inv invented. Finally, I am going to say which innovation was the which most in, important. In invention. Which invention was was the most important? As far as I am concerned. 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 I mean, in in my opinion. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, did you notice what is happening here? So this is an introduction uh, given by the teacher. Okay, and he's telling us what is it that he's going to do uh, throughout the class. Okay. So he's saying that I'm going to talk to you about. Inventions. So the theme or the topic is inventions. Okay. So um, I mean, he assumes that some of you may not know what inventions mean. That's why he explains it by saying that is, and then he says new ways of doing something. So actually, this is the definition of inventions. It's new things or new ways of doing something. Uh, all the inventions are in. Uh, the field or area of transport. So he's going to talk about all uh, the inventions in the field of transport. So obviously he's not talking about inventions in general because that would be too much, right? First, and then he starts to say first, second. So you know what he will start with, you know what he will do after and so on. 
First, I'm going to talk about different methods or types of transport. After that, I'll tell you when each method was invented. And finally, I'm going to say which in the invention was the most important. Is that clear? Okay, so this is, and this is actually what I'm going to, um, uh, perhaps I did it uh, at, the, at the very beginning when I said that we will do this and that. Uh, as of next time, I'll apply that exactly so that you know uh, how to negotiate your way through. Okay, so what happens in the rest of the class? You expect the teacher to go about the class, you know, fulfilling the promises that he made. What are the promises that he made? He said that I'm, I'm going to talk about inventions, right? Uh, okay, and then he specified and narrowed it down and said that I'm going to talk about the area of transport. So it's not invention uh, um, in, in general. Okay, so how is he going to talk about uh, inventions in the field of transport? He's going to start with talk about different methods or types of transport. This is number one. And then I'll tell you when each method was invented. This is number two. And then finally, he's going to say which invention was the most important uh, um, according to him or in his opinion. Okay. Can we read the rest of the... Um, I would like you to read the list of the lecture and, and see whether he did what he said uh, he, he would do or not. Uh, did he start with um, telling us about the idea of inventions in general, and then he started saying the different or giving the different methods of transport. And then after that, he gave us each method. And then finally, uh, he gave us what he thinks is the most important. Do we have that? Can we read the second track in front of your eyes and see whether the class teacher did just that or not? Can we do that? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yalla, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll give you two minutes for that. <clears throat> okay. okay, so what did he say he would do first. He said first in the introduction, if you still remember, he said, I'm going to talk about different methods or types of transport. Did he talk about that? Give me, yes. a, yeah, when he said yes, what? He yeah, when he said what? He said we use cars and bicycles, trains, small boats, and big yes. ships. Okay, it's actually, it's the whole first paragraph uh, of the body uh, of the body of the essay, right? So he started with a question, what are the main methods of transport that we use today? And then he started to answer, right? Yeah, right. Okay, and her, his second uh, part was, he said that after that, I'll tell you when each method was invented. Do we have that? Yes, we are. Okay, what yes. was, yeah, okay. So he started to talk about every and each method, right? He started off with what? He started with... With the walking. first, yeah, with walking, and he said that it, um, it was invented uh, 40,000 
uh, years uh, ago, right? Um, and then he started to talk about other methods, other, uh, right? Okay. Yeah. That's the yes, Indonesian uh, invented a boat. Yeah, that's correct, Yarihan. Thank you so much. And then he ended with what? He said, uh, what did he say in the introduction? He said that I'm going to say which invention was the most important as far as I am concerned, in my opinion. Right? Did he, did he say that? Did he give us his most important invention? Nope, he didn't mention it. He didn't mention it because uh, perhaps this is not the end of the class. Let me check. Uh, yeah, I think we have, we left something, right? Um, um, obviously, he's keeping that to the, 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 the third track, right? When you check the third track, you will have his uh, favorite invention, right? The most important, which is what, Tegma? Look at track 2.3. I think it's a, the plane. I think it's a plane. It's not. Yeah, we're, we're talking about him, not yeah. us. Uh, right. He said it was the last invention. If we go back in order to check the last invention that he spoke about, um, uh, I think the last invention was the car, the, the plane, right? Uh, according to him, it's the plane, right? Okay, good. So what I'm trying to uh, um, to, to tell you from here uh, um, is you, you need to always look out for the introduction that a teacher makes. Whenever a teacher walks into a class, uh, please mute your mic. Whenever a teacher walks into a class, he gives you an introduction in which he or she tells you about what he intends or plans to do throughout the class. He may use first and then second, third and finally. So you need to be on the lookout about that because that would help you while taking down notes and that would help you uh, a great deal in understanding, of course, what uh, the teacher is trying to communicate to you. Okay, so let's go back to the part that we left. Okay. It is a similar um, idea, but this time around it's a, it's a bit um, uh, I guess it's um, a festival. So uh, we also have a rhetorical aspect that we need to be aware of. When I talk about rhetorical aspects, I talk about the organization of uh, speeches, the organizations of readings. So you need to be uh, um, familiar with that. It's not all about grammar. It's not all about spelling and punctuation. You need to also know uh, how the writer or how uh, the giver of a class thinks. Uh, typically, uh, you have introductions and then development of ideas and then you have conclusions. Between among and among them, you have topics and subtopics. So what's a subtopic? So obviously, you know what a topic is, theme or idea, main idea. Subtopic means it's an idea that is related to the main uh, topic or the main idea. So in order for me to talk about uh, one general uh, topic, I may also need to give uh, subtopics, smaller and minor ideas that can help me, help me uh, explain the topic. So lectures like me often indicate change of subtopic very clearly. So in order for me to move from one topic to a subtopic, uh, I also need to give you clues. I need to give you signals, isharat, so that you understand that I'm moving from one, one point to another. Um, so as you can see, we have examples moving from the main topic, which is transport in general, 
two subtopics, which is the different methods of transport and their history and stuff like that. So first, what are the main methods of transport? Remember that the main topic was what? Was transport in general, right? Um, and then he is talking about the main methods of transport, and then he would move to us another subtopic and talk uh, about uh, those several methods of transport uh, when they were uh, invented. Um, and so on. And then uh, finally, he gives his opinion, which is also a subtopic. Um, we're not going to spend uh, too much time on the difference between Sha and Cha. Of course, you know the difference between the SH and how to pronounce it and CH and how to pronounce, pronounce it, right? So uh, let's move beyond that. So here in dates, years, and time periods. Um, again, we were familiar with in, at, and on, and all of that, right? So um, if you know the preposition, if you know that you, you have n, you can always, uh, um, you know, determine that uh, it's followed uh, by a month or a year, uh, right? If you uh, if if you have heard on but you haven't heard what came after on you know if if on is a proposition of time you know that it should be a day right so knowing the proposition can tell you a great deal about what is after even if you don't uh, hear it you get to hear uh, the word that comes after the proposition of time so we say dates with ori uh, ordinal numbers so ordinal numbers are numbers like what? First, second, third. They are different from cardinal numbers. When I say one, two, three, four, these are called cardinal numbers. But ordinal numbers, ordinal numbers are uh, or show uh, arrangement and sequence and order. Okay, I am teaching you. Uh, here and I'm on. Me, sorry, I'm teaching you here from the first floor, for example. So it's the first floor. The first floor indicates that we have a second floor, uh, a third floor, right? So these are called ordinal numbers. Okay, so cardinal numbers, when I say that. Uh, let me check and see how many people in class. I'd say we have 50 students. Uh, we have 50 students and one teacher, right? I don't say first teacher. I say one teacher, okay? Uh, I hope you, you can make the difference between it. So we say dates with ordinal numbers. When we talk about dates, we use ordinal numbers. When I say January 1st, for example, uh, on the 1st of January, right? Uh, uh, on the 30th of April. Um, we, when we talk about years, years means 18, 15, 19, 21, for example. Uh, as you can see, we use cardinal numbers, right? In 1815, in 1921, for example. Um, uh, and we also use time with time periods uh, with later, earlier, and ago. We also use in. When I say in 1964, she arrived in the USA. Uh, and then um, uh, nine years later, which is also Carmen. Okay. So writing about plans, you know what plans are. Uh, people are advised at all times to use plans. Plans are good, um, good things. I mean, when you plan for the class, when you plan for um, a day um, in your work or at work, right? So planning, planning for your future. 
It's always good for people to plan. Um, it's always good for people to uh, live life in a planned manner. So um, again, if we talk about teachers, they have to also plan uh, their classes. So let's use going to and well to talk about the organization of a talk. So all uh, I'm doing now is talk. So I have to plan this talk. I need to start with something and then after that I introduce something else. And towards the end I introduce um, another thing. So typically I would say first I'm going to talk about this. Then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll describe that. Uh, in normal conversation, we use going to to talk about future plans. We use well to talk about future possibilities. Okay, there is obviously a difference between plans in the future and possibility. Possibilities means that things that may happen and they may not happen. So you're not sure, you don't have control. In this case, you would use well. But if if we're talking about plans that you have made or you have spoken about with people and uh, or perhaps other people spoke about their plans so in this case you would use going to okay and we have a very interesting example when i say for example i'm going to work for the government after university so i'm going to work for the government after university so why are we using verb to be going to? Because the speaker has a plan and he's obviously working towards it, getting a degree and stuff like that. Perhaps I work at the Ministry of Finance. So he is having his uh, mind and heart set on joining the government after, you know, that's why He's planning for that, but he's not planning for working for the Ministry of Finance. Finance, of course, means money. So can, can we talk about you? Let's talk about your future when you graduate, inshallah. What are your plans or one of your plans? Mm. Can I start? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. What's your name? Rihan. Rihan, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, first, um, we have some uh, some of our friends. He can't sign into the to the meeting. His name is Ala. Which is very strange, isn't that strange? Because um, we're not. Uh... I don't know. He said uh, request you to sign him in if you can. Okay. Anyway, for uh, the answer, yes. I'm I'm going to be a finance manager one day, inshallah, since I'm start um, mm. studying accounting. That's accounting. Exactly. So you start, you're studying accounting and you, inshallah, are going to be an account manager, right? Inshallah. Yes. Mm, that's inshallah. So um, uh, Riham knows what she has in terms of plans. For that's why she's using verb to be going to, right? Um, so what, what is your second best? There's something that you're not planning for, but it, if it happens, it happens. Second yeah, 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 yeah. You would say perhaps I'll do this or that, right? Yeah. Yes. I got married and stay at home. Okay, this is maybe. This yeah, is perhaps. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, Riham. Can we have somebody else? Can we have somebody else, uh, I mean, sharing his or her plans with us? <clears throat> mm, okay, so let's go to the exercise and I would like us to use, uh, to see whether we're going to use verb, uh, verb to be going to or well. Check them, you have six, um, yeah, um, there are five because the first one is done for us. Um, what is it that he wants you to do? He wants you to talk about your plans, future plans, which means, you know, not uh, write about your plans in general, whether they are future or immediate plans. Okay, I'll give you um, a minute for that. Go ahead. 
think about them and then we can always talk about them. Okay, ready? Can we talk about it? Can we talk about our weekend plans or plan? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm go ahead. To meet my family on the weekend. Okay, I'm going to meet my family at the weekend. That's interesting. So why don't I say I'm going to, eh? I'm going to meet. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. What's your name? Uh, Mustafa. Okay, thank you, Mustafa. Can we have somebody else? Uh, the weekend, let's talk about the weekend still. What are your plans for the weekend, everyone and anyone? No plans for the, uh, perhaps the summer. Let's talk about the summer, the summer holidays. Any plans for the summer holidays? My plans for the weekend, going out with my friends. Yeah, I'm, I'm, are you going to do what? Uh, oh, yeah. What's your name, Malish? My name is Josal. Josal? We saw. We saw. We saw. Yeah. Okay. We saw. Can Can you say it again? Going out with my friends. On okay. The I'm going. Yeah. Okay. I'm going out with my friends. So the reason. Um, okay. She's using present progressive, uh, which is fine. You You can also use present progressive. Uh, to also talk about your plans, your future plans, whether these uh, young men are, you know, near future or um, future in general. Let's move to the summer holidays and if you have any plans for them. Hello? For me, I want to travel with my family. Yeah, um, uh, that this is one thing. Uh, let's talk about the plan. So do you have a plan for that? Are you planning for that? No, no, not oh. yet. Okay, so you, um, so perhaps you will travel with your family, right? Okay, so, but you don't have any plans for anything during the summer, yeah, whoever your name is, or whatever, <laughs> what's your name? Hadia Mansour. Hadia, okay, Hadia, go ahead. You don't have plans, um, you know, yet, right? For the summer. No. Do you have no. plans for next year? Uh, next year, also no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, do you I have a uh, plan? Uh, let, let's, let me finish with that. She has to come up with a plan for something. Do you have plans for after finishing your studies, Yahadia? Uh, yes, I want to complete a uh, master's. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, a master's. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any plans for lunch today? I think we'll be no. <laughs> no. Okay. Right, let's go back to the gentleman. He has plans for the summer, obviously. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to to go to the mom with my friends. Inshallah. Okay, so, so inshallah. <laughs> I, I don't want to know. I want you to use the uh, going to. Can you use going to? Uh, yes. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm going to travel to the mom. Yeah, I'm going okay. to travel to the mom with my friends. Can can I say I'm going to go to the mom? Don't you think that this is a little bit heavy? Going to go. So I'm this, going to the mom. Yeah, uh, this is yeah, this is what I was I wanted to say that if you have two goes, you don't need the second one. So you say I'm going to the mom right away. It's not that I'm going to go to the mom is wrong or something, but it's a little heavy, right? Okay. Yes. What's your name? What's your name again? Abdurrahman Yasser. Ah, Abdurrahman. Thank you, Abdurrahman. Can we have somebody planning for next year? 
<clears throat> Nobody has plans for next year. Uh, can we have somebody planning for after he or she finishes his studies? What is it that he's going to do, he or she? Okay. What did you say? Can I do it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, after finishing my studies, mm. I will... Uh, uh, I'm going. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a good job. Inshallah. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Wasal. Wasal, but okay. Thank you, Wasal. Uh, do we have lunch time plans, Egema, uh, for after we finish from here? Do you have any lunch time plans? Yeah, it's Thursday, and sometimes people go out. I mean, if you're in Jeddah, you can go to the sea, right? Uh, if you're um, in the MAM, you also can go to the sea and uh, right. Uh, if you're in Riyadh, you can also go to very beautiful parks over there. But we don't have uh, malls are open. I, I don't know. I never check. Are they open? Malls, you don't know. Yes. Like me. Are they are, are they open, uh, Abdurrahman? Yes. Yes. Okay. But you have uh, to download the app called uh, oh, uh, Tokkel now. So I, I'll take your word for it. Huh? <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay, so um, like I always say, I mean, language is not all about giving statements. Um, um, uh, I'm going to, to have a master's degree. I'm going to get married. You can always ask questions. Uh, I mean, talking about the future. And in this case, if you're checking the plans of people, you're going to use uh, verb to be and then the subject and then going to. So are you going to do this or that? Are you going? So um, and, and let me ask you, for example, let me ask you about your plan. And But I don't have to use the word plan. Um, let's talk about the summer. I like, are you going to take any classes in the summer? Are you going? Which means, in other, you, what is it that you're going to understand? You're going to understand that I'm asking you about your plans for the summer. So are you going to take classes in summer? Some people will say yes, and some, yes. Not. So, some other people would, would say no. Right? Okay. So are you going to go to the cinema this evening? Um, are you going to um, have a job um, during the summer holidays? Are you going to go on holiday this year? Are you going to work at the weekend? Are you going to Joe's party next week? Are you going to buy a new car next month? You see? So it's always um, um, checking using uh, verb to be and then the subject and going to. And people would understand that you are asking about plans. Okay, so you can always all, um, ask specific questions and you can also ask open questions. Your friend says yes to each question in exercise one. So you may ask him that you uh, edge questions. So what are you going to see? If, if you're going to the cinema this evening, what are you going to see? Do. Um, job in the summer, holidays, what are you going to do? Right? A holiday, where are you going? Uh, what are you going to study if we talk about the week? Uh, um, um, yeah, what? Um, the weekend, for example. If you, if you say that I'm going to study, where? If you're going to uh, Joe's party, so what, what are you going to wear? If you're going to, to buy a new car, what are, what are you going, how much uh, are you going to pay for that, right? And then we move to the... Um, speaking part and it's also about transport inventions so look at the website on the right and um, and see what it is about i would like you to look at the website this is obviously the website can you see that <clears throat> 
So what is the theme? What is the main idea? Judging from, you haven't read yet, obviously, but you can almost tell from the pictures and the graphs. Remember, we spoke about visuals the other day, and I said, if you have pictures, these are visuals, right? If you have graphs, these are visuals. If you have charts, these are visuals. So judging from what you see um, on the website, what is the topic? What is the idea? Hmm. May I, doctor, speak? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think uh, this, all these pictures is talking about different methods of uh, transport. Are you sure it's different methods of transport or one method of transport? Mm, okay. I think maybe just only one. Which is what? Um, I think bicycle. Which is the bicycle, okay. So also judging, judging from the pictures, what, what do you think? What do you think if there is an article or an essay about the bicycle that we're going to read in a minute? What is it in the, uh, the bicycles uh, uh, that the writer is going to talk about? Again, look at the different pictures. Mm. About yeah, I I think uh, there are different from. I didn't get that. Mm. What what do you think? Don't don't you think that it can that we have different? Um, I wouldn't say types of bicycle because the bicycle is the bicycle. But we have different uh, bicycles, and obviously they belong to different time periods. The bicycle in the past, and then the bicycle uh, um, later, and then the, the bicycle now. So we have changes, right? So don't you think that he will talk about the history of the bicycle? What do you think? Maybe, I think that, yes, okay. too. So look at the website on the right. What is, what is it about? You said that it's about the bicycle. So four things you didn't know about the bicycle. So he, the writer or the website writer, would give us uh, four things that he thinks we don't know about when it comes to bicycling. So um, we'll go all the way to 2.14 and read the conversation and get to know uh, about the bicycle and its history. 2.14, everyone. Okay, can we read that? Yeah, I would like you to read that, 2.14. It's... Um, Two people, voice A and voice B. Go ahead. Let's have a minute from now. Remember, conversations are easy to read, by the way. They are not uh, like essays where you have to think and you have to read for um, a long time and then you try to establish connections between the uh, sentences and the paragraphs. Hello, go ahead. You guys have a minute and tell me what is happening. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's talk about it. So how much do you know about the bicycle now? Can you hear me? Hello? Hi, doctor. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, yes we, 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 we know a lot of, uh, a lot of information okay. when he says about the transport inventions and uh, it's a student's topic that we need to do research for this. Uh, yeah. And I also mentioned the first, the first one who was made. I think the invent the the bicycle. It was invented in 19th century by Colonel Patrick, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kirk Patrick. Um. And also, we speak about the first person uh, who's uh, who's using the. For a race, I think, I'm not sure. The twenties. So, yeah, I mean, he's trying to say that it is true that it was invented in, in the 19th century by Kirkpatrick Macmillan, but he's saying that its history goes back to the time when uh, Leonardo da Vinci was alive. Okay. So it goes back 300 years earlier. When uh, I mean the idea, the idea came to Da Vinci, and then uh, it saw the light only in the 19th century, right? Um, okay, that's interesting. Okay, let's go all the way back. So who who uses bikes and bicycles? Who has the bike as a favorite? Whenever there is a chance, he or she uses it. Children. You 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 don't or you do? I did, but when I was uh, younger, younger. Are you when you were younger? And how old are you, Eriham? I'm actually 28. 28. Okay. So you're young. <laughs> so you can still use it, you know? Yes. And, uh, okay. Okay. Um, there are lots, of, if you're in Jeddah, we have lots of mamshas. We call them mamshas. I think that this applies to other places in the kingdom where um, I can see people using their bikes and it's. Uh, very and the mom also. Uh, and the mom and everywhere else. I mean, 
Uh, people use also bikes for health re re reasons, right? Okay, good. So uh, let's look at the vocab words that we have. We have the word apparently, which means apparently means clearly. A bicycle, billion, uh, draw and drew um, to record something or to uh, score a record. In this case, it would be a noun. And then rider. The rider is the one who rides a bike. And then, of course, you know what speed is. And then we have everyday English using technology. So these are things that we do on a regular basis, right? Can you see them? Can you recognize what is happening in every and each picture and whether technology is involved or not? Yes. Let's uh, let's unpack them. Talk about every and each one. What is the guy in the first one doing? Doing he's, laundry. Uh, he's doing laundry. He's using the washing machine, which is a piece of technology, of course, right? How about the second guy? What is it that he's doing? He's at work, but he's typing. Uh, yeah, he's just typing an email. He is doing research. Uh, and, and the piece of technology involved here would be the computer, right? Computer, yes. How about, how about the third one? What are we having? Copy machine. Yeah, that's a copier or um, Xeroxing or copying machine. Obviously, he's printing something else. Yeah. Right? How about four? What is this? I have no idea. So this is obviously a mobile or something, right? Uh, I think it's a mobile, and if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, if, if, if four is a mobile, how about five? <laughs> five so, is mobile. Yeah, definitely. How about four? I don't yes. know what four is. So it's okay. How about uh, six? What is that? Is it a scanning machine or something? Or uh, a barcode or something? Right? Yeah, probably. Yes. Yeah, and in either case, in, in either case, we have technology involved, right? Okay. So look at the pictures above. What are the people doing? Uh, we spoke about that. So have you ever had a problem with these pieces of technology? I'm asking you. Yeah. Have you ever had um, issues or problems with any of these pieces of technology? For me, mm. no. Yeah, no, yeah, even not with a mobile. You have to change your mobile because it doesn't work. It, uh, uh, it's not, yeah, it, it's not, I don't know. <laughs> even with mobiles, you have to change your mobile. Um, you, you never had a printer at work that is broken and out of order. Um, the computer, does it work all the time? Sometimes it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Once I mm -hmm. got blue screen on my computer. Yeah, see? Only once. Yeah. Only once? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? Rahman? Uh, Rahman, yes, yes. Okay. Rahman Yasser. Okay. So what sentence below goes in each conversation? I'll, I'll give you two minutes for that. I would like you to um, take the sentence and put it where it should be. Yeah, go ahead. This is easy. And it shouldn't take more than one minute. Okay, ready? So who who would go for one? Let's do number one quickly. So this is, uh, remember I made this distinction the other day between an exchange or a transaction and a conversation. A conversation is long, right? If you still remember that, an exchange, change or a transaction is very small when you have two people saying very little things. Uh, okay, so put in the powder. 
Um, the other guy would say, I have done that. Okay, uh, pull this thing out, pull the clients in here, push it in and switch it on. So where are we? A, B, C, D, E, F. May I, okay. doctor? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, F, I, okay. I, I can't get the, the washing machine to work. So, so I can't get the washing machine to work, and the other guy would tell him to put in the powder, uh, and then he would tell him that I've done that. Okay, uh, pull this thing out and put the coins in here and push it in and switch it on. Thank you so much. Yeah, rehab, uh, rehab. Let's move to number two. Um, press the menu button and go to settings. Okay, and then I choose date and time. That's right, we uh, are an hour behind in Berlin or Berlin. Okay. So what do you think, everyone? Uh, My doctor. My doctor. Uh, are you different from, are you, uh, do we have you and your sister or only you today, Rehab? No, this is me, Rehab. Okay, Rehab, go ahead. Okay, how do you set the time? So how do you set the time? Press the yeah. menu button and go to settings. Okay, and then I choose date and time. That's right, we uh, are an hour behind uh, really. Okay, let's go to three, everyone. Three. Follow the instructions on the screen. Insert coins. Uh, okay, press button A. When the light flashes, it takes a picture. So where are we? Number three, everyone. Uh, can I answer it? Yeah, please. How does uh, this thing work? Yeah, follow the instructions on the screen. Insert coins, okay, press uh, button. When the light flashes, it takes a uh, picture. Okay. Let's move to four, everyone. No, it isn't. It, uh, it's run out of paper. How do you put more paper in? It says you open cover, insert paper, replace cover. The photocopier is broken? Ah, yes. Uh, broken here, by the way, does not mean maksur. Uh, broken here means out of order. Yeah, okay. yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much. Five, everyone. Yes, I have, but I'm not very good at it. Do you know how to input uh, new data? Click on data view. So where are we? I guess it's... Uh... Have you ever used this? SPSS program, yes. 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 Yeah, that's good. Uh, and finally, number six, space, and then just put the book on the scanner, but it won't read my library card. Let's ask for help. So, where are we? Very quickly. Uh, use the book checkout. Uh, do you know how to use the book check out? Yes, very good. Okay. But one one final thing before we leave this exercise. Have you noticed this um, this expression that we're using? Have you ever have you ever done something? Whenever you check whether somebody has used or done or traveled, uh, at least for once. So you're checking, you can always use. Have you ever? Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? Have you ever traveled to Malaysia? Have you ever uh, ridden a bicycle? 
Have you ever ridden a horse? So we normally talk about things that we don't know, we don't, we don't do on a regular basis. Okay. So would you like to try this expression with me, asking me about something that uh, you checking whether I have done something or or not in my uh, forty um, um, plus years? So it's, it's it's have you ever? Yeah, try your luck with me. Have you ever taught in other universities, Masalan? Right? Yellow, try. May I, doctor? Yeah, go ahead. Have, have, have you ever have you ever learned another language? Yeah, have you ever learned another language? Yes, I have. Uh, I speak little French, and I tried my hand with Russian, but uh, not Russian. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Italian, and at one point, and also. Spanish, but you know, this was a long time. You have done. Oh wow, that's great. Um, okay, but they are not as good as my Arabic. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's it's still a good thing that you have yeah, done. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. Can we have other people trying their luck with me? Uh, mm. What's wrong with you now? Can I, doctor? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, have you tried living in another country? You know, have you ever tried living in another? Because we're we're trying to use the expression. Um, I mean, other other than Saudi Arabia and Egypt, no. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean that. Yes, you talk about another occasional country. visits. Uh, occasional visits. I went to the U.S. in 2000. Some some of you may may were uh, young. Yeah, you may haven't even been born. Um, yeah, let's um, let's stay U.S. In, in a very uh, twice, uh, but it was it, it wasn't living. It was more or less like staying for a month or two. Uh, okay, anybody else? Before we leave this part, yes, go ahead, Yaria. Have you ever visited Thailand, Indonesia? Have you ever visited? It has to be past participle. So have you ever visited Bali in Indonesia? No, unfortunately. They say it's beautiful and amazing and everything. Uh, okay, again, um, remember when we say that something, um, uh, something does not exist anymore. When you talk about food and you say that the food is not there anymore in the house, you talk about bread, flour, when you talk about juice, okay? You normally say that we are out of, we are out of paper, we are out of, uh, um, you know, bread. That means that we ran out of bread. We ran out of that. We don't have it anymore. Uh, I'm when I say, for example, I'm out of money. It means I ran out of money. I don't have money anymore. Uh, also, you have the expression out of order. Out of order means that something doesn't work. Okay, when something is out of order, it is broken. Broken means that it doesn't function or work anymore. Okay, so let's move all the way down. <clears throat> and here, talking about research. So you know what research is, right? So research is... Um, um, you normally uh, people ask you questions on uh, they give you prompts and you are on your way you go and do research I mean you try to find information about the thing that they are asking you about uh, research can be as simple as people asking you about um, a singer for example or a song and you're not familiar with the singer or the song. You may want to go to the internet and do some research. And then when you come back, you have information about the song or the singer. This is basic research. Sometimes we um, ask you to do research. And, and uh, if you're doing GR, for example, you may be asked to uh, do a TMA. A TMA is a piece of research where uh, um, the teacher gives you uh, a question or a couple of questions and then you go and research them and then you come up with uh, um, uh, 
um, a piece of research at here. So research is, uh, um, is something that you do on your own. Um, so do we, do we do research in universities? Yes, especially here in, at the Arab Open University where we ask people to do research from time to time. Okay, and you make research or do you or do research? Of course, you do research. You don't make research. If you say I'm making a piece of research on or I'm making research on, no, this is not acceptable. I'm doing research on. So do not make. So we often want to tell another uh, person about our research. If you want to talk to somebody about your research, um, how would you go about it? Uh, doing it, you normally uh, you introduce the information. You um, say, "Did you know that I'm doing this or that? Uh, do you know about this piece of information?" And you give him a piece of information that uh, you're checking. It says here. It says it, of course, is a reference to the research that you're doing. Apparently, apparently means clearly from the research. It seems that this is based on the research that you're making. According to, according to means so, somebody says something. Yeah, this is also based on the research that you did. Um, okay, so if somebody is, uh, uh, I mean, sharing information about his piece of research, um, you may comment and show interest. And how do you show interest? By saying, amazing, that's interesting. How did you do that? Really? Okay, it's, it's a kind of engagement. You're making them feel that you are interested and happy. Okay, so can we do this? Uh, this is uh, about a piece of research that somebody has done. Can we do it using the words that we have just seen? Apparently, it seems that according to it says, can we try our luck before we go and check it? Yalla, try. Go ahead. You can use the words and the expressions that we use, that we used on, on the right. Can I answer a person? No. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it, uh, it seems that uh, humans can never travel to other stars. Yeah, it can be. Uh, it can also say, I can also say it says, it of course is a reference to the piece of research. It says that humans, okay. uh, yeah, and, uh, the two of them are correct. Okay, number B, everyone. Apparently. Apparently, yeah, very good. Apparently, clearly, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't use it seem, uh, I wouldn't use it seems that, which means exactly like apparently, because I have a car. With yeah, that, has the same meaning, that's right. Yeah, but, yeah, very good. But with, because of that, the fact that with that, we don't use a comma, that's why we're opting for using a comma. Yeah. Apparently, people from Asia sailed across the uh, Pacific or the Pacific 600 years ago. See everyone? Here that the motorcycle was invented in 1885. What do you think? What do you think, everyone? It says. Uh, it says here that the motorcycle was invented in 1885. Thank you. D. To this, the first cars were always black. 
According? According? according to this, according to this, the first cars will always lack. E. Did you know? Did you know the scientific name for a horse and the, the, uh, yeah, for the horse is Equus Caballus? No, I didn't know. <laughs> okay, number F. It seems that it seems that it, it seems that you know. Yeah, it can, uh, but it it can be. Uh, um, did you know? Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. Because we don't have a question mark. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yes. Like so that. you can say. Um, it says here that uh, bamboo sometimes grows. You can also say. It seems that bamboo sometimes grows, right? So it's anything, uh, can I say apparently, but with apparently, you would need a comment. Okay, thank you. Let's move all the way to this. Uh, I would like you to check these words and see whether you have any challenges with any of them. Across, balloon, discover, fast, grow, horse, human, local, motorcycle, part, sail, and ship. Do you have any issues? Yeah, wait. Are you taking, talking to <laughs> us? <laughs> can you, can, excuse me, can you mute your mic? <laughs> yeah, Rawan, now we have heard everything. Okay, so Rawan is muted now. Okay. So, uh, I muted you. Yeah, she is now muted. Yeah, okay. So, uh, are you familiar with the word local? Can you, can you give me an antonym for local? Antonym is a word that has the opposite meaning. Local. What would be the uh, What? What did you say? Yeah, local, yeah, it can be foreign, very good. It could be international. Um, it could be universal, yes. Okay. How about the global? Global is fine too, yeah, that's good. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, okay. So can you recognize any of, um, no, not recognize, yeah. You have very famous places and you have very famous people. Can you recognize the place? Where are we in uh, one of the pictures is a picture of a place. Can you see that? Can you re remember recognition is to say that, ah, yes, I know this place. So can you recognize this person? Can you see this king? Can you recognize him? You recognize him, you say, yes, I know this king. This is King Henry uh, the Eighth, for example. This is the Anca city in Latin America, for example. Okay. So asking, checking questions, you're checking whether somebody knows about something or not. Uh, and in this case, you would use uh, questions. So we can check statements if we don't hear them correctly or if we don't believe them. OK, so sometimes you would ask questions in order to check whether you have heard something correctly or in order to uh, um, remind or alert the, the speaker that what he says is perhaps exaggerated or not believable or possible. Okay, so in, in either case you would use uh, question marks, uh, I'm sorry, questions. Um, so we can check statements if we don't hear them correctly or if we, if we don't believe. And we have an example. A bicycle is faster than a car in many cities. Isn't that strange when somebody says that a bicycle is faster than a car? 
right? What do you think? If somebody tells you that a bicycle is faster than a car and he stops, wouldn't you think that this is a little bit strange? Right? Yes, of course. Okay, in this case, you would ask him uh, a question so that you make sure that what he said, uh, he meant what he said. So you, you, you normally say, beg your pardon, uh, beg your pardon, what is fast, faster than a car? Sorry, what is faster than a car? And then he tells you. What did you say about bicycles? What did you say faster than a car? Okay, so he gets alerted and he tells you whether he meant in, in, in some cities or he, he, he's speaking in general terms. The Second World War started in 1939. Pardon, pardon means sorry, big pardon. So pardon, what, what started in 1939? So when did the Second World War start? Okay, so these are different ways of making sure that you have heard something correctly or uh, perhaps uh, um, asking somebody to repeat something that you haven't heard very well. Okay. So complete that checking. So you're checking these statements. These are historical. Some of them are historical for the most part, and some of them are scientific. And you're making sure that you have heard uh, them correctly, or that uh, perhaps you haven't heard the whole piece of information and you want it repeated. Okay. So the French Revolution was in 1789. Okay. So if you're going to ask a question, checking, you're going to say what? When? Uh, when did the revolution start? Uh, when, mungkin, it can be a, a possibility. When, when uh, did the French Revolution start? Or when was the French Revolution? Right, when was the French Revolution? Right? Okay, let's move to B. The Ancus built a city on a 2,000 meter mountain. The Angus, I mean, you're, you think that this is incredible and this is impossible, so you're checking. What can you say? Yeah, obviously, if you don't have a question word, but this is going to be, no, it's okay, it can be also information. A city on a mountain. So what are you going to say? Who built, who built uh, a city who? on a mountain? Yeah, who, who built a city on a mountain? Uh, who, who did you say? I mean, it can be also. Who did you say built a city on a mountain? Apparently, the penicillin comes from a fungus. Pardon? So what are you going to say? Where does it come from? Uh, where, yeah, uh, where does penicillin come from? Pardon, where, where does uh, penicillin come from? It seems Henry VIII had six wives. Are you trying to make sure that what you have heard is correct? Pardon? Pardon? How many wives? Uh, How many wives How did many he wives? have? How many wives did yeah. he have? Okay, it says here that too much water makes you ill. Sorry? Sorry, what makes you ill? Right? Some animals sleep in winter to save energy. Some animals sleep in winter to save energy. Sorry? Why do I sleep? Why do some animals sleep in winter? Why, Why do, do they sleep in winter? Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. So what we have here asking 
uh, subject questions. When you ask about, of course, you're familiar with how a sentence is made. You normally have a subject, and this subject can be human and it can be non-human. And then you have a verb, and then you have the rest of the sentence. Let me give you an example. When I say that Ali lives in Jeddah, so Ali is obviously the subject, lives is the verb, and then in Jeddah is the rest of the sentence, right? Um, uh, when I say that cars are uh, a good means of transport, so obviously um, cars is the subject and then uh, uh, R is the verb and then the rest of the sentence. But let, let's ask about the subject. In the first case we have Ali and the second case we have cars, right? So if you're going to ask about Ali, let me give you the example again. Ali lives in Jeddah. If you're, if you're asking about the subject, what are you going to say? Okay, let me let me make it clear and then you can uh, use it. Yes, uh, absolutely. When, when, when the subject is a human being, you use who. When the subject is something is is non-human in other words you use what okay so uh how do you in jetta you would say who lives in jetta mm -hmm. cars are a good means of transport you would say what is uh, a, um, a good means of transport are you getting the idea yeah okay yes good so what we have here, we're making questions using the correct tense. So circle the best way to make each uh, question. Yeah, I think about it. Uh, I'll give you a minute or two, and then uh, we do them. Yeah, go ahead. If you're ready, I am. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so number two. Can I answer? Uh, okay, go ahead. Who was killed on 4th April 1960? Yes. Uh, I'll tell you um, uh, why we wouldn't say who killed, because if you say who killed, you need to have an object, right? Yes. But obviously we don't have an object here. So, we're actually, we're asking about the object, but that's why we're using uh, passive. Who was killed on uh, April 4th, 1968? Can we move to three, everyone? May I, doctor? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What did happen in the Indian Ocean on 26th December 2004? We never use this expression. We never use what did happen. Okay. 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 So, uh, so you're asking about the subject, and the subject here is non-human. And in this case, all you need to do is to use what you don't use it. So, what happened in the uh, Indian Ocean on December twenty sixth, uh, twenty six, uh, uh, two thousand and four? Okay. Four. Four. Everyone. Can I answer? Can I answer? Yes, yes. 
Yeah, go ahead. The female uh, voice. And the female student. Hello. What's wrong? Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. I go. Okay. Uh, what happened in the UK on fifth November every year? So it's every year, and whenever we have every year, we have present symbol. So what here means you're talking about something. So what happens? So what happens in the UK on November 5th uh, every year? Number five. Can I answer? Yes, go ahead. Uh, who lives in igloos? In igloos, yes. Who lives in igloos? The igloos are uh, houses built by people who live in the Eskimos, of course. Okay, number uh, six, everyone. Can I? Yes, go ahead. Uh, what happens in 4th July every year? Excellent, okay. So it's every year, that's why it happens. Okay, 777. Can I? Can we have somebody else, Manish? Okay. May I, doctor? Can we have somebody else, Manish? <laughs> Can I? Okay. <laughs> okay. Who wrote War and Peace? We're, we're doing number six. Uh, we're doing six or seven. Uh, we're doing seven, yes. Yeah, yeah. who wrote yes. War and Peace? Yeah, who wrote uh, War and Peace? And War and Peace, of course, is a very excellent novel. Uh, 888. May I? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what goes around the sun in approximately 365 days? Excellent. What's your name? Uh, uh, are you uh, Asai? No, you're not. No, I'm Riham. 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 Okay, Riham. Uh, I, I think we'll stop on this note and with this item. We'll meet again, inshallah, on Saturday if you can make it. Um, uh, in in the writing center, and if not, uh, we may have also another session before we meet again on Tuesday. We will meet again on Tuesday at 12 p.m. Okay, Gama. So I'll uh, okay. I'll announce everything on on the Telegram group and on the WhatsApp. Thank you. Okay. Until then. Thank you. I wish you all the best and have a nice weekend. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Doctor. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye.